Good evening Hackology and welcome to another episode. In tonight's episode we'll be concluding our Android series and what we're going to be doing tonight is installing Ubuntu on the Android operating system uh, and for tonight's tutorial you're going to need a USB lead, you're going to need some sort of Android rooted device and um, an SD card to store the image on. The image is about 2 gigabytes. Um, and it increases to about three once you've fully updated it. So, the first thing you'll need to do is download the image. I'll post this in a link. Um, it should appear shortly after the show. And <clears throat> you'll need ADB configured, which will need to recognise your Android handset. And basically, I'm going to try and document this as well as I can and um, do screen capture on Debian, so we're doing it on Debian this week and um, let's get started so what I'm going to need to do first is get rid of the existing install I have on this Android handset so let's go ahead and connect this up <coughs> okay so to copy the files up in this episode we're going to use ADB push um, make sure you're in the Android SDK directory and in the platform tools folder and then the command that you'll need to run is at, um, dot forward stroke adb space push then the file path to the location of the Ubuntu folder so it would be forward stroke home username Ubuntu and then we're going to be copying them up to the SD card so then it would be space forward stroke SD card, forward stroke Ubuntu to the folder that we're going to copy them into. Um, ensure that they're in a folder on the root of the SD card called Ubuntu, otherwise this won't work. Um, so I'll get back to you as soon as I've copied these up. Um, it's going to take a while because the files are quite large. And um, <coughs> I'll show you the next step. <coughs> Once you've copied the uh, Ubuntu folder to the root of the SD card, it's worth pointing out that this is an operating system. It uses the SD card in RW mode, so it uses it in rewrite mode, which means it rewrites to the SD card, which could cause some damage to your SD card. So it's completely your responsibility, your choice, your decision if you run Ubuntu. I've run it a few times, I haven't had any problems on my memory cards, but in the past I've had issues with live installs of Ubuntu on memory sticks using the same settings. So just be warned, if you brick your phone, if you damage your phone, if you damage the operating system or anything to do with the phone, your actions are not my responsibility. I'm just showing you what I've learned. So, um, you've copied the Ubuntu folder to the phone. Uh, okay, so once you've got uh, Ubuntu copied onto your um, the root of your SD card, the next thing you'll need to do is CD into the Android SDK and. Oh, ADB devices and check that the device is there and then we're going to run ADB space shell ls up privileges to super user cd space forward stroke sd card and cd space burn to ls clear ls and from here we're going to run sh 
ubuntu.sh. Okay. And this actually uh, installs some scripts to automatically boot Ubuntu when you type boot Ubuntu. Okay, so we've just booted Ubuntu and now we're in uh, running in Ubuntu on the memory card uh, on the Android device. And the first thing that you'll want to do uh, is if you get any errors by the way it may be that your device doesn't support loopback devices or it might be that the loopback is busy and needs resetting so try rebooting your phone and if there's another app for it using the loopback device remove the other app or um, stop it from running um, okay and then try and load um, try and run boot Ubuntu again so once Ubuntu has loaded you're going to need to update the sources list so to do that we're going to echo speech marks and we're going to dev http forward stroke I'm hurrying because um, I think I'm running out of time on the um, SD card so phone is online so uh, what I'm going to do now is I should have told you to ensure you've got wireless turned on let's connect the wireless so we can update Ubuntu and wireless is enabled and I'll we'll from here Once Ubuntu is finished updating, uh, you'll probably set up want to set a root password. So set a root password uh, by typing PAWSWD. I'm going to set this as something nice and easy. Right, and uh, then next you'll probably want to install Type BNC Server um, to get access to it. I'm not saying the VNC is the best access, but this is the coolest thing to be able to show your friends. So we're going to install um, app dash get install typed VNC server and confirm that, leave that to install and then once VNC server is installed I'll come back to you with the next step. Maybe not, okay it's installed. So the next thing is to install LXDE. So we're going to apt dash get install LXDE. Um, LXDE is a lightweight version of the desktop um, because it's running on the Android device and we've only got one gigahertz Snapdragon processor on board this one. Um, rather than using Genome I'm going to install LXDE but you can skip this step if you don't fancy doing it or you think your phone is capable of handling Genome. So I'll come back to you when this is finished and we'll get on with setting LXD up for VNC server. As soon as LXD is finished installing we're going to need to configure 
um, Type VNC server to use LXDE rather than Genome. So you can do that simply by copying and pasting the um, text I'll provide below the video into the terminal window. I'll provide you with a screenshot. Um, or a copy and paste of the output actually, let's do that. Okay, so that's all complete. And now we need to create a script to boot the VNC server. So, um, I think again we can just copy and paste this text. Just remember to press enter on the last command. We'll do this in. Oh, this is okay. It's already. So, place that. Ch mod it. Ls. Root. Ls. Okay. So now we can boot the VNC server. Okay, so I will get the um, scripts uh, working and make notes on uh, why they didn't work. But I want it to be as copy and paste as possible for you. Okay, so you will, when, when you boot VNC server for the first time, you're going to need to supply it with a password and verify it. And it will ask you if you want to create one for a view only account. So once you've uh, installed and run the boot VNC script which will be saved into your root folder and um, we can now connect to the Android device via VNC so if this is still the same to the VNC server applications internet desktop client So, <coughs> that's how you install Ubuntu on your Android device. You can also access it through the Termina Terminator emulator. You can also access it through the Terminal... <laughs> okay, um, so that's how you install Ubuntu on your Android. Um, as we've used ADB on this, if you install the Terminal emulator, you'll be able to go in there and boot Ubuntu manually on your phone and you can also boot the VNC server by doing a dot forward stroke root forward stroke boot VNC. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode. Uh, I've got to say a big shout out to all my students who took my security course um, on Monday. You, uh, you did really well and um, everybody left with a smile so I'm really really chuffed about that. Um, we'll be back soon. Moving on from Android and getting into some real hacking. So, um, peace. We'll see you soon. So there you can see the Ubuntu desktop. And this is actually running in real time on the Android, um, connected via wireless. And there you can see the Ubuntu desktop running um, the LXDE um, GUI on the Sony X10. It's slow, but it's uh, it's pretty cool and it's one to boast about to your friends. So uh, yeah, have fun hacking and uh, we'll see you soon.